Good morning, everybody, on this blustery morning. Nice to have tea back in the chamber at long last, eh, after all these times. Right, we'll go straight off then. Uh, apologies, please, really. Disappointing, I've not heard from Conor or Ross. Nothing. Right. Uh, Declaration of interest, agenda item two. It's gone off. Most of the meeting held on the 14th of December 2021. I'll let uh, Caroline take that one up because I don't think I was there on that one, was it? Oh, yeah. Um, I see this as a true record. Has anyone got any comments that need to or corrections? No. Thank you. Uh, now we've come to the appointment of the panel to select. Uh, Independent review members for independent persons. Uh, I believe we've had one volunteer, is that right, Julie? Yeah, um, Mr. Ashcroft already agreed to serve on the panel, so you need to appoint a further four members. So we need two further people who'd be interested yeah. Anne Egler for one and Richard for the other. That's fine. That makes us yeah, that makes us core with yourself. Okay. Yeah, we'll Smashing. Thanks very much, Richard. And Anne? Big one, uh, but I think members have been involved with this, so uh, uh, review of the Constitution. Any members have got any questions? Do I need to turn this? Uh, yes, sir. thank you. Um, the, the working party was excellent, and um, I felt it really worthwhile, and um, it's something that we should look to do on a... Um, um, I wouldn't say not a regular basis, but a, a, a basis from time to time. I thought it was superb. We'll let Anne Marie just. Uh, oh, John, are you. Th thank you, Chairman. Yeah, just to uh, introduce the, 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 the matter briefly. Um, so, at December, you appointed the working group, and the working group uh, has met and had a look at the constitution. Um, I think I'd describe it as a bit of a a service rather than sort of getting a new car. It is something that um, is ongoing all the time. The Constitution is a living document and it needs to be kept up to date. And it's really helpful to have the views of um, elected members from this committee. I think we've also spoken to the leader and cabinet and all the members of the council have had the opportunity to have an input into the review as well. And the report brings together um, the product of all those uh, conversations and if you look at the appendix, you'll find that a table one in the appendix sets out all the changes that the committee is asked to approve and recommend to full council. Um, there's then a, a second table, a table two, that contains a variety of technical changes that I, I propose to make under my delegated powers. So that's things like where the legislation has changed since the constitution was done, and these, these kind of reviews give the opportunity to pick all those sort of things that are different now and make those changes. And there's also a table three which sets out a number of areas uh, which have been raised by members for further consideration and for noting at this stage, but those are matters that will be given some consideration. So the, the, the uh, proposal, uh, the recommendation essentially is that you um, approve those changes in table one and they will then go to full council on the uh, 17th of March for formal approval and incorporation into the constitution. And um, once they've been incorporated at that point, then we'll start to sort of share the new constitution with people. But with that, with that caveat, it is a living document. That's why we no longer hand out the, uh, the 350 page copies to everyone because we have to keep handing them out too frequently, I think. So, um, we, but we will make sure that link is available for members and perhaps more easily available than it is now on the members area of the uh, intranet. Thank you, John. Would uh, Anne-Marie like to uh, add anything to that? Anne-Marie, are you still with us? I hope you're feeling better. 
Uh, I am. Thank you very much, Chairman. No, I think um, uh, John Tradewell has uh, described where we are at, and I um, recommend um, this to members today. Thank you very much for everybody's participation. Janice, would you like to? Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Um, just to say, having sat on that working group, I did think that was time well spent, actually. Um, it was a productive session. And, and I'm happy to support the recommendations. Thank you. Someone second that recommendation? Right, Graham, and uh, everyone happy with it? Thank you very much. Thank you, John. We'll excuse you, go back to your normal day job. <laughs> can, can, can I just... All right. just, just very quickly, I just wanted to thank everyone who was on that panel. I absolutely agree with Janice, it was very useful. And, uh, and quite a nice panel to sit on, really. And I'm glad to see a lot of our uh, comments have been taken into this. So uh, thank, thank you to the officers as well involved. Well, John Leavigas will. Uh, that's it. Agenda item six is the internal audit charter. So we'll go to uh, Debbie Harris, please. Okay, thank you, Chair. So this report presents the internal audit charter for 2022, which has come to the committee um, for approval today. This report is presented annually uh, to the committee. So on page 37, this provides some further backgrounds to why we need an internal audit charter. So our public sector internal audit standards, standard 1000, requires that the purpose, authority and responsibility of the internal audit service and activity uh, is formally defined in a charter. So when you go through uh, the, the charter, which is attached as Appendix 1, you will see uh, there are various sections covering where inter internal audit sits within the organisation, its reporting lines, key, staker, key stakeholder roles and responsibilities in relation to SLT, uh, the county treasurer uh, and the head of audit, as well as the audit and standards committee. So there are very minimal changes that are being made to the charter this year. Um, there's reference to the new internal audit and risk management system, and also uh, there's an amendment to the old reference of the Data Protection Act 2018. Those changes are highlighted in yellow freezer reference, which are on pages 46, 47, 56, and 57 of the pack. Um, as the changes are minimal, Chair, um, I'm not going to go through the whole charter, but happy to take any questions in relation to any of that document. Just a, a couple, uh, a point and a question. First of all, thank you very much for highlighting the changes. That is so helpful when you're going through, and especially if it's a long document. Um, just with most of these things, when there's a charter, how do people know that they're subscribing to a charter? How is that communicated? Thank you. Um, we set that out in our audit reports. Um, there's a, a statement that's made at the bottom of all of our audit reports. Uh, and as well as our training for the in-house team, we regularly talk about the internal audit charter and the various expectations. So I bring that to the, the team meeting annually each year as well. I've got one question, it's not in the notes, it's the, the net budget was uh, just over a million pounds this year. Uh, what was it last year, do you know Debbie? Just trying to compare, it was comparison wise. It was just short of a million, I think it was 989,000. Right. I think it's nice for people to have comparisons on the issue. Is we happy to uh, approve that please? Someone yeah. propose it? Uh, I'll propose Caroline, it. Caroline, someone second it, Janice? We all, all agree, thank you. Back to Lisa, the uh, forward plan for 21-22. Lisa. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is our forward plan, our work plan of the committee, um, and it outlines those particular reports and agenda items that are going to come back to the committee at the next, meet, next two meetings, uh, March 22, and uh, the 26th of April. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions in relation to the content of those two particular meetings. Um, if 
there's any items that come up as the result of conversations that we have later as part of this particular meeting, I will add them on to a, a suitable uh, meeting um, agenda as well. In terms of the next round, the next year, um, I'll start to work that through and bring that back to the April meeting so members have got um, visibility over the next 12 months. Happy to take any questions. I was scrolling down. <laughs> Caroline, have you anything to say? No. Everything's on here that we wanted on from before. I'm happy with this. Uh, anyone else got anything they need to, to be jumped up or brought forward? No? Uh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, now we come to uh, the close part of the agenda. Um, there's no public present, is there? I think we've just got a couple of meetings. Uh, Want to Do you want me to? that the public be excluded from the meeting for the following item of business which involves the likely disclosure of the exempt information as defined in the paragraph of part one of schedule 12a as amended of the local government act 1972 as indicated below thanks for that uh, caroline 